Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now I had originally not planned on making this video, but this video was actually a request from one of you guys over on Patreon. So thank you so much to our awesome patrons for this video. Uh, this one is about how to grow calendula or basically how I grow calendula here in my yard. Um, as many of you guys already know, calendula is considered a hardy annual flower and what basically that just means is it can handle um, a little bit more cold and frost than what is typically expected from, you know, you know, some other types of plants like tender annuals and things like that. So um, we have a few options in terms of how to grow these calendula. I just have a very, very small patch of these this year, probably like a two foot by three foot patch of these. Um, so unfortunately not very much footage. So we have the option of starting them in the spring or the option of starting them in the fall depending upon where you live. One of the most popular ways to start calendula plants in the spring, as you see here, is by using the winter sowing method. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the winter sowing method, I have a full video about it. It's called uh, The Complete Guide to Winter Sowing here on YouTube. And I think it will be very, very helpful to help you kind of understand the winter sowing method. And of course, the same kind of general rules apply to calendula as well. Basically, we're making use of plastic containers to kind of create a miniature hoop house or a miniature greenhouse so that we are able to start seeds very, very early in the season outdoors without the use of any kind of grow lights or anything like that. So it's very, very helpful. So, of course, uh, if you want to start these in the spring, you have the option of using the winter sowing method as I do here in this video. Um, for me, I usually start winter sowing containers with calendula about the end of January to the mid middle of February, and I am in Kentucky. I am in zone 6B7, uh, kind of on the border there, just depending upon the year. You also have the option of direct sowing calendula seeds in the spring as soon as the soil can be worked. So like I said, since this is a hardy annual and can handle a little bit of frost and freeze in things, um, you know, we can direct sow those as soon as the soil can be worked. Now, if I do that, my springtime weather seems to warm up very fast. So if I do that, uh, sometimes the calendula plants don't have as much time as I would like to get established. And so the plants will be a little bit shorter or the blooms might be a little bit smaller than I want. So my solution to this problem is to sow these seeds in the fall. Um, what's going to happen, what I like to do is I like to um, sow my calendula seeds in the fall in a seed tray. All I do around the end of September to October, um, about a month before my last or before my first frost date, I like to sow these seeds in a tray, just a tray of potting soil, and get them growing outside in the garden. I don't need any kind of grow lights or anything. The conditions in the fall are great for germination of these cool season plants. And what I actually do is transplant the seedlings into my unheated hoop house that you see here in this video. Now, I realize everybody doesn't have an unheated hoop house, and depending upon your climate, you might not even need an unheated hoop house. You might not need to protect them. But as you can see, I get sometimes, you know, snow and ice and things like that. And my winter weather is exceptionally wet, so it seems like having this hoop house really is... Uh, really does make a huge difference in terms of my ability to overwinter these calendula. Um, as you can see, mine are kind of group planted. I didn't separate every single seedling, and I always seem to have really, really good results with this. I've heard from commenters all the time that they are able to overwinter calendula where they are, you know, in the Pacific Northwest without any kind of protection. Here in my zone, I noticed the main difference um, and needing protection for these calendula really comes down to moisture rather than temperature. Uh, temperature lows during the winter here in my zone can get down as low as zero Fahrenheit. I believe that's like negative 17 C. Um, and I do cover those with an additional Agrabon row cover when temperatures get that low. But it seems that keeping the soil drier on the drier side is also very important here in the winter because I have tried several times to overwinter these in the hoop house and I usually sometimes would end up losing the calendula and I couldn't figure out why um, until I started really monitoring the moisture and making sure to keep them 
on the dryer side. It, what happens when I keep them on the dryer side, it really just prevents a lot of issues related to, you know, mold and mildew and potential for rot. And uh, I used to ha see a lot of yellowing of the leaves. Um, that completely changed. And we start getting some very, very nice blooms very early in the season. This year, my calendula started opening up in the hoop house around the first week, middle of March. And uh, that's when I really started to see the first flowers. Of course, it took a while for the flowers to really get going. Now that we're here in May when I'm making this video, the flowers are blooming nice and strong. Um, the initial blooms are a little bit on the shorter side. The stems are a little bit shorter. But now that the weather has really, really, you know, started to warm up and the days are longer and everything, I'm getting these very nice, tall, strong, sturdy calendula blooms that are so easy to use for cut flower arrangements. And of course, it's calendula, so um, other people have other reasons to grow calendula, um, you know, things like that. The only thing I don't like about calendula, really, for cut flower arrangements is they, they can be so on the sticky side with the stems and the leaves. But they're really just a beautiful addition overall to the garden, especially for people looking for early season color. You can see they're blooming the same time as my pansies here in the hoop house. And when um, you know the weather does begin to warm up, we can go ahead and just take that cover off the hoop house and have these to enjoy in our garden. I know a lot of you guys were asking to do kind of a calendula tour, like I kind of do the other the other different types of flowers that I grow here in the yard. But truthfully, I only grew two varieties of calendula this year, so I'll be more than happy to show them in this video. This first one, this kind of yellowish, creamy colored one, this was the uh, Kinglet Apricot. This is a Scabiosa flowered calendula. This came from Geo Seeds, so did the other one I'm gonna show you here in a second. As you can see, they have those very, very pretty cushion centers with the big kind of uh, scabiosa blooms there in the middle. Not all of the flowers were scabiosa flowered. I think that's pretty much a very common thing when it comes to scabiosa flowers, that there is a lot of variation. But I find, you know, it seemed to be about a 50-50 mix of scabiosa and regular type blooms in my garden. And the regular type blooms were very pretty as well. So I'm definitely not disappointed with how that worked out. The stem length was nice and tall and strong. Uh, so the kinglet apricot are definitely one that I would consider growing again. Very, very nice. The other variety of calendula that I grew in my yard was called Greenheart Gold. Uh, there's another uh, Greenheart Yellow, I believe, is the other type that there is in the Greenheart series. But as you can see, they are a very rich, just gold, saturated gold orange tone that is so, so pretty. They remind me of um, Gerber daisies, I think personally. Um, now, not all of them had the green center. Some of them had just a regular yellow center like you would expect with calendula. But some of them had this very, very rich, bright, bright green center. And um, in a lot, some cases, they were kind of covered up with this kind of like whitish looking webbing. It wasn't webbing, but it just, it looked like webbing. I'm not exactly sure what caused it or what causes it to look like that. You can see in the picture but I actually kind of like it. It actually gives it um, kind of a interesting look that I wasn't really expecting. And as that bloom continues to open up a little, a little more, that that kind of whitish look does go away. So it's again another one of those things that is your own personal preference, whether or not you uh, like that or not. I uh, just wanted to quickly share this video. I hope that it was helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. As always, you can leave any comments down below. Um, the spacing on these was about three inches apart in my weed barrier. I did not water them through the winter time. Um, you know, I made sure my bed was well amended at the beginning of the growing season. Other than that, I did not fertilize them. And of course, you can save the seeds. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not missing any of the major growing points. If I am, like I said, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions. Didn't pinch them or anything. Just a really nice, quick crop, quick, beautiful cut flower. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you are so appreciated. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.